Welcome to my kitchen. I'm Chris and this is my friend Tiffany. We're going to show you how to make cut out sugar cookies today. Now, before you begin to cook something like cookies, you really should get all of your ingredients and equipment out ahead of time. It helps things go much more smoothly. So our first step is to cream together a half a cup of butter and three-fourths cup of sugar. It just so happens that one stick of butter is equal to one half cup of butter. So I don't even have to measure this. All I need to do is unwrap it and put it in my mixing bowl. And I have one half cup. Set that aside. Now, to measure the sugar, I need three-fourths of a cup, but I don't have a three-fourths cup dry measuring cup because those are not made. They're not standard. So I need to use my kitchen math, figure out my fractions, what do you think I need to use, Tiffany, to get three-fourths cup of a cup of three sugar? Three one-fourths. Three one-fourths, or I could take a shortcut and do one-half plus one-fourth. That equals three-fourths. So here's my sugar. I'm going to get one-half cup. There we go. And the proper way to measure sugar is to spoon it in lightly until it's kind of overflowing, and then level it off. You don't pack it in, you just spoon it in lightly and level it off. There's one half plus what? One fourth. One fourth to get three fourths. See, math comes in handy everywhere. Spoon it in lightly, chop, 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 and level it off. Okay, there's my three fourths cup of sugar. Now I'm finished with my sugar, so be sure to put the lid back on it so that something doesn't fall in there and contaminate your sugar. To cream the sugar and the butter together, I'm going to use my electric mixer. You might have one of these, you might have a stand mixer that already has a bowl attached to it, or you might not have a mixer at all. If you don't have a mixer at all, you can just use a fork. But I'm going to use my hand mixer, so I'm going to stick it down inside the bowl before I turn it on so things don't splatter. And then I'm going to go ahead and put it on low to start, and then crank it up a little bit. I want this mixture to be light and fluffy, it just takes a moment. I'm going to turn it off before lifting it out as well. And when I set it down, the beaters are still over the bowl so I don't get crumbs and butter everywhere. It's very important to follow the steps of the recipe and cream together your butter and sugar first. Don't just dump it all in just because you see an ingredient list. So next I'm going to add my egg. I've already cracked the egg into a bowl so I could make sure I didn't get any shells. And then I'm going to add my vanilla and I need 3 fourths teaspoon of vanilla. I find my measuring spoons. And once again, three-fourths is not a standard for measuring spoons, so I need the one-fourth and the one-half. And I'm going to measure it outside of my bowl, just in case I accidentally spill and won't have extra. I'm going to go ahead and measure both at the same time and put those in. And close up my vanilla so I don't accidentally knock it over and spill it or drop anything in it. And now I'm going to continue. That's what's considered my moist ingredients, and those are ready to go, okay? Tiffany, we're going to get the dry ingredients together now in a separate bowl. One and three-fourths cup of flour. So, I have one cup measure. Do you want to go ahead and measure that the same way I did the sugar? Spoon it in lightly, and then level it off without packing it in. Spoon it until it's overflowing. You're fine. That's why you do it over the canister like you're doing it, so anything extra falls back in there. No, don't pack it. Use the side. Chop, 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 and then level it off. Perfect. And then in there. Okay. And for the three-fourths, I need to again use one-half plus one-fourth. So we're done with that. You can put that down. And I'll go ahead and get the one half, unless you want to do it. Go ahead. Okay. Spoon it in lightly. Chop, chop, chop. Level it off. One half cup. Plus one fourth cup. There we go. 
I'm done with my flour, so I'm going to put the lid back on so I don't spill anything into it. Okay, the next dry ingredient is a half a teaspoon of baking powder. This is baking powder. Make sure that you don't get it confused with baking soda. That's a different ingredient. I need a half a teaspoon, so I'm going to find my half a teaspoon. And I'm going to reach in there, and my baking powder has a built-in leveler, so I don't have to chop it off like I did with the other, with the flour. I can just use the edge in the can to level that off. And that goes in my flour. And one more dry ingredient is one fourth teaspoon of salt. So that's going to be my smallest measuring spoon. Again, I'm going to measure it outside of the bowl in case I spill. I'm going to add that into my dry ingredients. Use this kind of salt in a canister rather than your salt shaker or the salt will go everywhere. Okay, I need to whisk those items together. So go ahead and do that. Go ahead and incorporate the baking powder, the salt, and the flour all together. Perfect. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now you can go ahead and dump that bowl into our moist ingredients and we're ready to mix it all together. Awesome. Now for this part, we're going to use a wooden spoon because this dough now is going to be very thick and sticky. So we're not needing the electric mixer. We want to get the dry ingredients all combined with the moist ingredients so that we have a ball of dough, basically. It gets kind of stiff. Keep working at it. It's a good workout for your arms. Okay, it's just about done. I have a little bit of flour down in the bottom. Now I'm just going to make it into one big ball of cookie dough. And at this point, you need to refrigerate this dough for about one hour, and then it'll be nice and cold and ready to roll out and cut into shapes. So get some plastic wrap to wrap it in so that it doesn't dry out. And I'm just going to grab that ball of cookie dough with the plastic wrap. Push it together, make it a ball, and seal it up. And now my cookie dough is ready for the refrigerator. You can use this in one hour, or you could leave it in there even for a couple of days and make your cookies later if you want to. And that's my cookie dough. Okay, our cookie dough's been in the refrigerator about an hour. It's nice and chilled and ready to be rolled out and cut. But before we start that, we need to preheat our oven. 350 degrees on bake is where you need it to be. So have that warming up while you cut out your cookies. First, we're gonna take on our nice, clean, smooth surface and put a little bit of flour so that there's a dusting to keep our cookie dough from sticking when we roll it out. So just like that, sprinkle it right on your surface that's nice and clean. Okay, and let's open this up and get some cookie dough. Take a chunk of it. It's going to feel cold and hard because it's been in the refrigerator for a while, but your hands will warm it up pretty quickly. So kind of mush it together. Kind of flattening, flattening it out a little bit with my hands before I put it on the floured surface. That's about ready to be rolled. Now I'm going to take this tool. This is my rolling pin. Hopefully you have one of these. You need one of these for making cut out cookies. I'm going to put some of that flour on there so that it doesn't stick either. And I'm just going to get started flattening it a little bit more. I want this to be about a fourth of an inch thick. If it starts coming apart, just put it back together with your fingers. Go like that. Okay, that's about ready for cutting. I want to have my cookie sheet ready to go to put my cut out cookies on it. So I'm going to add to my cookie sheet a piece of parchment paper. If you don't have this, it's okay. You don't have to have it, but I really like it because the cookies come off really, really easily when you use it. So just place that on there. And now we have our cookie cutters. We're ready for the holidays. We've got a pumpkin for Halloween. Just place it right on there, press it down, and then lift it straight up. And then use your spatula to scoop it up and put it right on your cookie sheet. Okay, I think I have room now to make a flour. 
Okay. It's just like when you did Play-Doh when you were a kid, right? Okay. Put that one on the cookie sheet. Whoops. Put that one on the cookie sheet, but not too close to the pumpkin because you don't want them to stick together when they bake. They're going to get a little bit bigger in the oven. Okay, let's take our scraps because they're too small now to cut something else out. Squeeze them back together. Let's get another chunk of cookie dough. Smush around our flour a little bit more. Okay, you want to try it this time, Tiffany? Okay, remember to put some flour on your rolling pin. Yep. Great. You can go in all four directions if you want to. Mm -hmm. You can add a little bit of pressure while you're rolling and that'll flatten it. Okay, that looks thick enough. Take your pick. What cookie cutter would you like? The star. Okay. Oh. It's a great star. <laughs> okay, let's kind of patch it up a little bit because you can get a few more cookies out of this yeah. piece of dough. Let's kind of smooth it out a little bit like this. So it just so happens that my oven is preheated to 350 degrees, so I'm going to pop these in. They're supposed to bake 8 to 10 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and put the timer on 8 and then check them then. Timer on, 8 minutes. Okay, there's the timer. Let's check and see if they're done. Always use your pot holders and always pull the rack out a little bit first so you don't get burned. I see that they're getting light brown around the edges and they're firm, so they are done. So carefully take your cookie sheet out of the oven, put it on a safe heat resistant surface, spatula very carefully onto my cooling rack and that's where they'll finish cooling. As soon as they're cool, they're ready to eat. If you'd like something fancier, you can decorate these with icing. Our sugar cookies are nice and cool. Let's try one, Tiffany. Mm. So good. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.